Mr. Yim, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Marcus, I mean, for the privilege uh, to speak first. I mean, well, I'm, the, uh, suppo I'm supposed to be the last speaker in my alphabetical order. Well, it is always uh, nice and lovely to visit Marrakesh, Marrakesh. Uh, but I think it's a pity and a regret that I have to talk about the most serious and grave problem, security problem, in the world now. Well, um, uh, this issue is not new, uh, as uh, you all know, has been uh, for 25 years uh, for the attention of the security people uh, of uh, most uh, uh, you know, uh, concerned countries. Well, I was uh, heavily involved when uh, this issue came out uh, maybe in early 1990s. Well, uh, I see some participants, I mean, uh, will uh, work together, I mean, to uh, resolve the issue. Well, uh, these days, I mean, tension uh, has been built uh, very heavy uh, in my country, uh, not because uh, we expect any possible provocation by North Korea again, but because of the arrival of President Trump. Well, the uh, Korean government I mean, mounted maximum security vigilance I mean, uh, you know, in protection of the U.S. president. Uh, well, th as I told you, I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, this nuclear issue of North Korea has been there for the last 20 years. So I think uh, if I uh, try to go through all the phases of this issue, it will take, uh, you know, maybe hours or so. Uh, I will skip the uh, early part of uh, this issue, but I will just uh, start from uh, the recent development of uh, this North Korean nuclear quagmire. Well, uh, global outrage at North Korea's nuclear program has grown since September of this year, when Pyongyang claimed a successful test of a hydrogen bomb and made further threats to detonate another hydrogen bomb in the West Pacific Ocean. Unprecedented exchanges of personal attacks between the US president and North Korean leader marked another escalation in the war of wars, Mr. Trump calling him rocket man told the UN that he would totally destroy the North if uh, threatened. While Kim Jong-un called Trump a mentally deranged US daughter. Well, I had to find the, the word daughter in the dictionary. I didn't know what it really meant. I think that we now have to squarely ask the question, why did the international efforts fail to prevent North Korea from developing a weapons of mass destruction program? What went wrong for the last almost 20 years? My answer is follows. Number one, North Korea has invariably been cheating and it vanished on the agreements it signed where it promised to freeze and stop its nuclear program in return for a security guarantee and economic benefits. Thus, North Korea is squarely to blame and should be held responsible. North Korea experiencing devastation of the country by the massive bombing of the US during the Korean War and being isolated at the end of the Cold War North Korea set a national goal to develop a nuclear weapons program which could guarantee its regime's survival under any circumstances. That was also the supreme and standing order from Kim Il-sung, North Korea's founder, and later uh, uh, this order was enshrined in their constitution. Then why did North Korea come to the negotiation table and close those past deals to denuclearize. 
North Korea made three agreements, but uh, three agreements were not implemented at all. The answer is simple. North, Korean, North Korea needed both the weaponization of nuclear and missile capabilities and certain benefits from outside, a security guarantee, economic assistance, and diplomatic normalization with the Western countries. North Korea believed that it could achieve both objectives at the same time, continuing the WMD program while negotiating for the necessary benefits. Now North Korea officially pursues nuclear and economic development together, and they declared it as in Korean byongjin Jongchek or two-track policy. Secondly, the US, Japan, and South Korea, including myself, were deceived by the North Korean unprecedented scam. Later, former Clinton officials said that they knew North Korea was cheating on the HEU program and planned to use that intelligence as leverage to keep the agreed framework in place and the plutonium on the lock and key. Cheating is bad, but being cheated sometimes worse. Having learned of the past history, the Obama administration barely bothered to restart the disarmament talks with the North. Instead, it adopted a policy called strategic patience, doing nothing. But under that policy, they lost the time allowing North Korea to improve its mastery of nuclear and missile technology. On numerous occasions, including during his presidential campaign, Trump vowed that he was committed to resolving the North Korean nuclear issue. He's on an Asian uh, trip now. He will arrive in Seoul, I think, on, uh, in the morning of Tuesday. So we are looking at his lips. Despite Trump's tough talk, his choice of options may not be wide open due to restrictions that are inherent in each of them. Among the potential options that have been raised, I'd like to discuss a few of them and their ability to achieve the goal of CVID of the North Korean program. First, the military option. Donald Trump has said that any U.S. military option would be devastating for North Korea. But he added that military action isn't Washington's preferred option to deal with North Korea's ballistic and nuclear weapons program. Theoretically, if North Korea fired an ICBM targeting U.S. territory or South Korea or Japan, the U.S. would make a preemptive strike on North Korean military sites, and that could lead to North Korea's massive retaliatory attack on South Korea or even uh, Japan. This scenario of going to war with North Korea would risk the lives of millions of people across the region. Regardless of how much has been said about possible military action in reality, this war scenario is the last option to take. President Moon of my country and China has openly opposed any war scenarios on the Korean Peninsula. South Korea's nuclear option. As North Korea is closer than ever to full-blown nuclear capability and prospects for resolving this problem seem dim and prolonged, Public opinion in South Korea recently has moved toward favoring a scenario in which South Korea also should go nuclear. The conservative political community in Korea strongly insists that the best way to deal with North Korean nuclear provocation and threats is to arm South Korea with its own nuclear weapons or redeploy U.S. tactical nuclear weapons, which were pulled out in the early 1990s. Should South Korea take this option, it would also face unbearable difficulties and strong opposition from the international community, 
including the US, China, Japan, and others. Third, sanctions plus show of strength. That means extended deterrence by the US. Since North Korea con uh, conducted its first nuclear test in 2006, North Korea has been under economic and financial sanctions introduced by the UN Security Council and the international community. The Trump administration recently adopted an executive order to deny North Korea's access to the international banking system. These strengthened sanctions imposed on North Korea should be effective and are quite different from the past ones which failed to affect North Korea's already shattered economy. In order to thwart North Korea's continuing provocation, the US-South Korea recently put on maximum military vigilance and conducted joint military drills with various US strategic resources being deployed on and around the Korean Peninsula, including three aircraft carrier strike groups. It, in fact, uh, since its last test of a hydrogen bomb and firing of an ILBM in September, North Korea has maintained the silence. My conclusion is that a nuclear armed North Korea is not acceptable. Number two, unless South Korea and the US is attacked, military options are out of consideration. Continuation of stringent sanctions on North Korea plus US extended deterrence and show of strength would be the best option to deter North Korean provocation, which I hope will lead to a CVID resolution of this <laughs> quagmire. Finally, should North Korea continue on this path, then the international community should be united to bring down the Kim Jong-un regime. I will stop here.